<laughs> Howdy, everybody. And once again, we are coming to you from somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And uh, in the middle of nowhere today, we're going to work. Or we've been at work. We're trying to finish up our uh, hunting blind. Look at that. And, uh, now we're close. All I gotta do is cut some more panel and get a roof on that there, or put the tin on the roof. Roof's up there. Now we just gotta put some tin on the roof. Yeah. yeah. So, what I figured is I'll bring you all along and show you how I do this. We're not gonna install it. Um, because I haven't cut my pieces yet. So we're going to get some pieces cut. And, uh, we're going to see how I do that. I've battled cutting tin for years and years. And it can only be as hard as you want it to be. And, uh, or it can be as easy as you want it to be if you're <laughs> willing to spend a couple of dollars. We'll explain that right now, so... As you can see, we got some R panel up here. And we need to cut that down to or eight in or eight foot sheets. And we're gonna cut four two footers out of there. And we can install them on the top up there. And I can even get an inch of overhang by cutting them 24. Uh, because our uh, the pieces that cover the ridge and the hips allow me to do that because they're pretty big. So, well, how are you going to cut that tin? Yeah. Well, man, I have battled this. Man, sometimes it can just be hard. But I bought this tool. And, uh, I'm not sure what you call this tool. I don't know what you call it. I call it a nibbler. But I don't think there's anything on here that says nibbler on it. It says Makita all over it. I think it says something in French here. And, uh, well, well, it gives you a bunch of safety stuff right there. Do not ever or you will lose a finger or something i don't know don't cut tin too big because you'll break your tool man i have tried to cut tin with uh wow use a pair of hand shears and try and get through that uh -uh. that's that's a no-go it takes way too long and it hurts. You'll be wore out. And, uh, man, I've used a skill saw. You know, just turn your blade around backwards and it'll cut right through it. Well, there's a little truth to that, but it's about as loud as... It's got to be as loud as a jet engine and it kind of sounds like it too. It's horrible. I'll, I'll never ever do that again because I've done it for like an all day deal. And that was back when I was young and dumb and probably didn't have another choice. And uh, I've used electric shears, they're not too bad. However, getting over these profiles is not easy. You know, man, when you're trying to run. Your electric shears up, over, back down, and then continue to make a nice straight line all the way across. Mm -mm. It's hard. It just it sucks. But with this tool, and maybe we'll we'll, we'll get to see how this thing works. Uh, this makes life so much easier, man, because you can just stick this in here. And it just goes, and man, you can just go up and over. And 
you'll probably see me fight it a little bit, but oh man, what would a job be if you didn't have to fight just a little bit? Oh, anyway, let's get y'all a little tripod here and y'all can watch me battle some tin. This will be better. Hey, there we go. I can get pretty me in there. So, it's like I said, we want our pieces 24 inches. And what I like to do is I like to have these two. I got one sheet on the bottom, one sheet on top. And uh, that way we can do something like this. This top sheet is going to be our straight edge. And we just want our piece 24 inches. And we're going to cut it. So we're going to take our tape measure. And we can slide our top piece back and forth until we get 24 inches. And then we'll even check it on the other side just to make sure that there ain't no foul play going on. And everything looks all good. Next, we're going to take our Sharpie. Um, because it leaves a good mark, it stays on there, and then you'll be able to see what you're doing. And we're just going to trace where the where these two pieces line up. Gives us a nice, pretty, straight line to follow. And uh, you do kind of want to make sure your pieces are nice and clean so that you get a good mark on here. And if you're going over a bunch of dirt and or moisture, you know, it's really hard to make a mark on here. And it will just rub right off. And so... We got a mark. Well, we can scoot this back out of the way. Uh, we can make sure that our boards underneath that are holding everything are not going to interfere. So we're going to have to pull that out of the way just a little bit. And I'll fix y'all up in just a second. Alright, we're kind of where we want to be. And uh, don't wear a bunch of loose fitting clothing while you're doing this. Uh, tuck your shirt in or what's going to happen is you're going to get hung up on one of these corners and you're going to rip a big old hole in your shirt and then your wife's going to be upset because you don't have any shirts left and you got to go buy new clothes. And you're wearing clothes to work in that you shouldn't be wearing to work in. This ain't always the brightest idea in the whole wide world. So we do want to put some gloves on. We are handling metal. It is sharp. And even though this tool makes a really nice cut, um, it's, a, it's sort of jagged now and it's not like ugly or anything, but oh. Uh, it is something that you will cut your hands on. Another thing is uh, manage your cord. See? I've got my shirt caught right on there. And I don't have enough space. So I'm just going to fight this the whole time. But however, man, we can get it lined up. Well, I can pretty much reach all the way across this piece. Uh, controlling this thing is, is not really bad. Uh, I mean, it, it's going to move around a little bit. I'm not going to make the most perfect line in the world. However, it's going to be good enough to where we can use all of our pieces and no one's ever going to see a difference. It's not really too loud in the scene. Oh.
And there you go. It didn't work too bad. I didn't even have any practice cuts. So, let's take a look at it. What does our cut edge look like? Oh, man. Looks good. I'm not upset about that at all. But I do want everything about as perfect as I can make it. And if y'all can see down this little, your imaginary straight line here, you can see I didn't turn out too bad. And you see, I mean, there, you can see a kind of a jagged cut there, but it's not, it ain't really ugly. And it doesn't scratch up the material real bad. It just, it, man, the, this tool does a really nice job. So, man, I would, I just have to suggest that anybody that's ever going to have to spend a day cutting our panel, we call this our panel, I don't, I'm guessing that's a pretty standard name for it. And uh, well, it's just tin roof, other than corrugated, because you can also have the corrugated, the old stuff. In fact, let me take a look over here. My gloves will allow me. The barn is made out of corrugated, well, it's not made out of, but the roof on it and the siding is corrugated. In. Well, it's kind of it's the stuff with the round humps on it and it's more thin it's not as it's not near as tough as our panel that's why you don't see a lot of corrugated tin being used anymore but man i tell you what if prices don't start coming down, you're going to see a lot of people tearing that corrugated tin off of people's barns and using it for to make something new. And uh, I have seen people, uh, it's, it's fashionable to uh, get that old tin off the barns, all that old rusty corrugated stuff and... Uh, use it for decorative purposes uh, on, on the inside of the building man people love that stuff and because uh, it is kind of cool man you can, you can put it on your little you can put it on a bar looks pretty good or the wall behind you looks pretty good and you know man it's just a, more decorative than anything i don't know why people want rusty metal I haven't used it, but just a couple of times. Huh. Anybody know what a sun dog is? It's kind of where you get a... A, a, a rainbow effect in the clouds. Without there being... Let me see if I can show this to you guys. Maybe it'll still be there by the time I get y'all in here it might be too bright or the camera might not pick it up somewhere right in here there's a cool little rainbow effect that you can see I mean, it's, it's just barely there and it happens when the sun and the earth and the clouds and everything I think it's when it comes together at 22 and one half degrees, which is very cool. And, and I can't see anything in the phone right now. You're probably thinking, well, this man's just pure crazy. But I think it should be, if I can get my phone, it should be right about there somewhere. It's not, it's faint doesn't really look prism but I can see it 
and it might get better or it might be going away and I already missed it. But yeah, man, that's just where the, the sun and the clouds just, man, they come together almost in a perfect little way. Seems like, yeah, it's going away. And, uh, well, you could see kind of a, it was kind of a rainbow effect. Oh, yeah, I see more of it right above these trees. Where are them trees at? I think it should be right about there somewhere. Once again, it's starting to go away. It's like a big rainbow halo. But you, you see it better in certain parts of the cloud. Like it, sometimes you'll get the full halo. That's a pretty special occasion. So yeah, man, sun dog. Really only happens certain times a year. It's kind of a treat when you get to see it. <clears throat> Anyways, guys, that's that. Uh, cutting 10, 101. I don't know if this is really 101, but... It's just a way to do it. Uh, if you can find that tool, there's more than one company that makes. Uh, I'm sure you can Google nibblers, and uh, something will come up just like that. That's what I wanted to show y'all. I forgot. See those little moon, those little crescent pieces. Well, that's how that tool works. It, it just shears off those little bitty pieces as it goes through the metal. So it is the downfall of it because your ground is going to be littered in them. And uh, they're going to get stuck to your shoes. <laughs> and you're going to drag them in the house. And uh, you probably don't want to barefoot these things. You may get one. And uh, that is truly the only downfall about these. You get all those little bitty pieces. So, but. I'll deal with all them little bitty pieces it's as easy as it is to use the machine, man. It's just. It's just sweet, man. I don't. I guess I can try and do something like this. So, look at how rusty and. Nasty my tools get him. So anyways, that's the head. And that's the blade down there. And that little blade just goes... Chick -chick 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 -chick, it's like a punch more. Let's see if we can really get in there and see. Let me get it to focus. You see there's a kind of a profile in there. And so every time that piece goes up and down, it just punches out that little crescent-shaped piece of uh, metal. There's no way y'all can see this, but... Let's see if I can one time turn this thing on. As I'm getting old in my young days. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I guess the timing on the camera was kind of matching with that. <coughs> you get that cool effect where you can actually see what's going on. Kind of like when the helicopter blades look like they're not moving anymore. And it's just floating in midair. Frames per second, not feet per second. Anyways. I've rambled on long enough. I gotta, I gotta cut uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more pieces, so I can get them up there on the roof. And then when I get to the point where I gotta cut my angles and stuff, we'll make another video. Anyways, love you guys. Thanks for hanging out, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye, y'all.